Hello everybody. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing very well and that you're having a lovely whatever day it is that you're watching this. I hope that it's going well. So I just kind of uh, wanted to come on and share something. Uh, this video is definitely going to be very different. For one, uh, the name of our channel is different uh, because now it's just mine and so everything is kind of different and this is my first video that's just like officially just me so uh, that for one is different and this video might come as like out of the blue or just interesting but I excuse me if I'm looking down it's because I'm looking at a no my notebook I kind of just wrote out in brief, very brief, like what it is that I wanted to come on and say. I just want to kind of share my personal story and testimony as far as how Jesus saved me personally um, from something that I never ever thought that I would get out of and something I never thought I would be free from. So I just feel, I feel very called to share my testimony and I kind of wrote this down so I'm just looking at it, but am I scared to share it with everybody? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, sure, there's fear there, absolutely. Um, I have told some people, uh, a decent number of people, and the number is growing, but uh, overall not that many. And so my thoughts are kind of like, oh, what will people think? What are they gonna think of me after they hear this kind of thing? Will this change people's perception of me? Will anybody even care? Or is this just kind of like ridiculous for me to do in the first place? The answer and the truth to all of that though is that I don't know. And that's not for me to know. But if God is calling me to tell people, then how can I say no? And ultimately, I just want one person to be touched or affected or changed in any sort of way from my story just one person and if one person were to be changed by this or affected or touched by this in any way then all of this will have been worth it and if there's 99 people who don't need this that's fine but if there's just one person who needs this then jesus is going to touch that one person i firmly believe that so before i officially start i just kind of want to pray like right now that God would use this to touch someone and to reach someone and change someone's heart. God has this in his hands and he knows who, who this is for today. I, I may not know who this is for today or tomorrow or any time that this video is out there, but God knows. And so, yeah, um, I just pray that this will be received. And I pray over every single person listening or watching this and I pray that God would just have his way here today as I share my story, so. <sighs> so we're gonna start from just kind of like the beginning, like an overall testimony of my life and finding Christ and all of that. So I grew up in the church, pretty much my whole family are Christians. And so I was raised in that way and I'm very blessed to have been raised in that way. I like to say that I was born in the church because, I mean, I was there from my birth, I was dedicated, all of that stuff. I went through all of the Awana stuff, the programs that they do there, Sunday school, all of that stuff. I, I was the kid in church who, in Sunday school, if some if the leader would say, hey, who knows the answer to this question, I, I would be the one to raise my hand because I, generally speaking, knew the answers. <laughs> I, I definitely had a big head knowledge of all of this Stuff. I knew what they were looking for, all that stuff. I, I did a VBS growing up, Vacation Bible School. And so, yeah, just I grew up in the church. I accepted Jesus officially when I was seven. My dad prayed the prayer with me when I asked him to when I was seven and kind of went over the whole thing with me and wanted to make sure that I understood what that meant. And I think that I did, but I also will say that I, I definitely was praying every single night after that God would come into my heart like I'd be going to bed and I was like God please come into my heart like please don't leave my leave me and don't leave me alone and 
So I don't think I really understood that like once you pray the prayer, it's it's done and you have Jesus and he's not going away. So, so that happened. Two years later when I was nine, I was baptized and I was baptized by my grandpa on my dad's side. So that was a really special experience. And then going into school in like fifth, sixth grade, I attempted to make Christian clubs and go around and like tell people about Jesus. And at one point, I think in sixth grade, I had a friend who told me that I was shoving my religion down her throat and she didn't want it. And so she shut me down and I remember that hurt me pretty bad. And I felt really bad about that and I didn't, I didn't understand that. In seventh and eighth grade, I kind of felt like the only Christian in my school. There were a couple of other Christians, but we weren't like best friends or anything. Honestly, my best friends in middle school were all very much not Christians. And we had lots of talks about all of that stuff. They knew where I stood. They knew what I believed. Did they like it? No, but uh, we were still friends and I love them. And I will always, always love them and have fond memories of them and of our time together. As we go into high school years, I was in youth group at my church, but I didn't have the greatest experiences in youth group. It was a culmination of things. All of these things kind of led to me really not wanting to be at church. It just sort of ended up not being a safe place for me anymore. And I felt like they were focusing on the do's and don'ts of Christianity in the youth group and not as much like let's go deep into the word and let's learn more about how to cultivate all this stuff because I felt like a lot of the things that they were saying and a lot of the messages that were they were doing I already knew about all that stuff I already had the head knowledge and I just wanted more and I wanted more depth in my faith and I felt like I wasn't getting that so that was unfortunate but yeah so that I feel like that caused a lot of frustration and anger and just I feel like it also caused me to do a lot of things outside of the church and in private that people didn't know about because, you know, I couldn't do things in public. They were, were very strict about things. And so I just kind of think that when a church is like that and they like put you in this little box of rules and stuff, it encourages kids our age to just like, okay, well, if I can't do this in public, I'm gonna go do something else that's worse in private. So I had that experience where I just like, I wanted to rebel and to go against what they were saying because I didn't like what they were saying. And I did a lot of things in private in my relationship and otherwise that were not good and could have been avoided, but weren't. Okay, so this is where my testimony starts to take the more serious turn and where I am definitely the most nervous to share, but I, I, feel like I need to. So I haven't kept track of like exactly when this started. I don't, I don't know. And I don't think it like matters all that much, but it was, it was years ago. It probably started sometime in high school um, and going into college in 2019, it was definitely there and it was becoming more of a big issue in my life. So I don't, I don't know when it started, but I, I grew curious about pornography and I started to kind of look into that and then it grew from there and it became something that I was addicted to whether I wanted to admit it or not to myself or to others. I didn't I didn't ever want to call it an addiction. I I didn't want to let it get that far, but it definitely was and the thing about something like that is that it really does start from just a curiosity and a question. And if you don't have somewhere that you feel safe to go and ask about something like that, then you're just gonna look at it in private and figure it out for yourself. And generally it doesn't turn out the best. And that was my experience. And so I think it did start sometime in high school, sometime when I was in the youth group. And because of all the stuff going on in the youth group, I just didn't feel like I had anybody to talk to you about that or to ask those questions to. I had my boyfriend and that wasn't that helpful for me. And so I just, I started with that and it didn't even start with like the worst of the worst. It started with 
Netflix shows and like, you know, just the, it didn't start with straight out pornography, but it got there. And once it got there, I couldn't really stop. It It's so, so easy as a kid or a young adult in our age range and in our generation nowadays, all of us have phones or computers or iPads or whatever it is, all of us have technology that makes it so easy to access that kind of thing. All you have to do is close the door, be alone in your room, feel the temptation and go on Safari and have a private browser. It's not that hard. And so that is definitely what happened to me. And I didn't have like a trusted adult that I could talk to about that until until I was at college. And I'm very, very grateful that I had this person. I talked to the campus pastor at the time when I was on campus. Honestly, it got worse while I was away at college. And I think it was a lot of like the culture shock of being away from my family, being away from what was normal, being away from my boyfriend and having to worry about the stress of actual college and dealing with hard classes and having to do all of this stuff that's so different than what I'm used to. And I think that accelerated all of it and it made it worse. And it was so easy to go into my dorm room and just lock the door and uh, ha have that happen. And every single time that I watched any of it, I, it, I don't know, it would last like I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, right? Not that long, but every time that I would stop, then I just would literally sit there and like cry and just feel like the worst person on the planet. I felt so miserable and alone because I felt like I couldn't tell anybody for multiple reasons. And so my boyfriend knew because at the time, like I had friends, but I, I didn't feel like I could tell anybody, um, but my boyfriend knew everything. And so I told him, but it was kind of just like dismissed and there wasn't a lot that was there to help me. And so it just kept going and nothing changed and it got worse. And so I reached out to my campus pastor. I emailed him. Well, I, I sent him an email saying like, hey, I need to meet up and talk. Um, I feel really trapped and I don't know what to do. And he, he was like, oh yeah, of course. So we meet up and I told him about it. And I just remember being so shocked at his response because he didn't, he didn't respond in shock. He didn't respond with anger or with disappointment or any of that. Um, he responded with so much love and care and m wanted me to know that I am not alone. And one of the things also that we talked about is the fact that, you know, as a, as a woman, as a girl, this kind of thing is like way more taboo for us than it is for guys. And it tends to be a thing where you know, oh, guys, guys do that all the time. Like it's more common for guys than it is for girls. So because of that, as a girl, you feel very isolated and you feel like, okay, well, I can't tell anybody because it's not normal for me. It's not normal for girls to watch this kind of thing, but that's not true. And it's such a misconception that girls don't struggle with that because a lot of girls do. <laughs> so message there is you're not alone. So that was one of the things that he, told me and wanted to make sure that I got through my system is that I am not alone. And sex is meant to be something that is beautiful and amazing and that you get to have and have this connection with a person that ties you two together, but you're supposed to have it within the confines of marriage um, because that's when it is truly the most amazing experience. And God wants you to experience those things um, just completely not in this area and that twists a person's view and really can kill love and can kill a relationship and it's just horrible so anyway the conversation led into my pastor telling me that he wanted me to start journaling and so i started doing that and i still have the journal 
So <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read. I have like a little note that I wrote to myself in the very beginning of it. And I'm going to read to you what I said. And I, and I think that this kind of sums up everything that I was feeling in the moment. And honestly, it's probably going to be a little emotional to read through this again. But, you know, it shows how much things have changed. So I'm going to read it. I wrote, Dear Morgan, if you're reading this, I hope you're reading it to look back on how much you have grown. I hope that this journal helps and that a year or five years or 10 years in the future, you'll be proud that you started this. Last Tuesday, October 22nd, this is in 2019, I met up with um, my campus pastor. I had sent him a cryptic email, as he put it, that Monday night saying, I've been struggling with something, feel trapped and need help. So we met in the shack, that's my college's um, like snack, smoothie, coffee type place. We got our food and he asked me what's been going on. I told him I've been struggling with pornography. I have felt so trapped, alone, ashamed, embarrassed, and guilty for so long. It felt absolutely terrifying to tell him all this. I have never had the opportunity for a healthy, non-condemning relationship with a pastor, mentor, or adult in general. Thomas was so good to me. I don't know if you remember how relieving it felt to know he wasn't judging or condemning you, but I do. Amazing. Through this journal, I hope to track down past, present, and future in terms of how and why I started in this addiction, when it happens, and what I look forward to in my future that gives me reason to fight this. I hate that this is present in my life. I want it to change. I want future Morgan, you, to be proud of who I am and will become and the changes I've made in order to grow. I want you to find somebody amazing to marry. I want you to be free. I want you to know and accept how beautiful and loved you are. Throw off everything that hinders you, Hebrews says. All this is a hindrance. It is keeping you from being who you are supposed to be, who God made you to be, who God wants you to be. It is keeping you from feeling like the daughter of Christ that you are. You are so special. You are so beautiful. None of this changes who you are. This is hard, but you are strong. God is stronger. This addiction and temptation is strong, but God is stronger. The devil is strong, but God is stronger. So go out, worship your father in heaven who created you with a purpose, as said in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. The one who conquered the world, as said in John 16, 33. The one who sent his son down to die for you. He will always pursue you. It's about time you pursue him too. This journal is for more than an addiction. It's for you to get some self-love and see yourself as God sees you. You can do it. I hope you're proud of what you see, future Morgan. So yeah, I just love that. That was my meeting with the campus pastor and that was back in 2019. But even with the journaling and things, it still got worse. And then, and as we all know, COVID started and then I left campus and then it got even worse because I was alone way more often and, you know, by myself, all the rest of the year and I ended up doing school online in fall of 2020 and that didn't help because then I was seriously like stuck in here in this small little place and I'm still struggling really bad. I also was developing a lot of anxiety for the most random things for absolutely no reason but then again does anxiety ever have a reason? I don't know but that is also something that I'm still struggling with. Uh, as the year progressed, I got more and more miserable and I felt more and more trapped and I started, I really started thinking like, I, who, who am I? Like, what is, who is this person? This is not, this is not who I am. Like, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. I have always loved Jesus and I know about him and I know what he did for me. I know he died for my sins. So why did he die for me and why am I still struggling with this something so dark that is completely the opposite of who I am that I literally can't tell anybody about because what would they think of me and like who, who does this make me and it was such a frustrating frustrating thing and I would definitely say that the majority of 2020 was my loneliest darkest and lowest year that I've ever had I had uh, one person by me but I felt like I didn't have anybody else I desperately wanted to stop. I, I wanted to stop so bad, but every time I had 
any inkling of temptation in my heart and my mind like as soon as I saw something that like triggered that in my brain I just felt like I I couldn't stop it and once I had the temptation I shut the door and was alone in my room and went on safari or whatever it was um but this then uh in December 2020 that was the last time that I watched pornography and the last time that I did I, I stopped watching and I, once I set my phone down, I was sitting and I was having those, the same time that I've been having for years and years and years where I just sit there and I kind of like stare at the wall and I cried. But this time I just got so angry about it. And I, I seriously, it just like was on my knees and I gave it to God. And I said, God, I'm so sick and tired of this. And I'm so tired of being this person who feels trapped. And, and I don't understand this and I don't wanna do it anymore. I'm just tired of it. And so I decided to be more intentional with my time. Uh, so I started uh, going on YouVersion, the Bible app every day, very helpful. Um, I, I start every single morning by watching the verse of the day story that they have on the app. And I start my morning with that. And then in December, I started, um, you know, with a devotional or a Bible study that I would do every single night. And so I would start and end my day with God. So, and that's, that's when things really changed for me. And I started to develop so much more joy in my life. And I just felt so free. And then... March of this year, 2021, I started looking for a, a new church and I had a friend tell me about the church that I go to now. And I went and I visited on a Sunday and then I went the next day on Monday to the college group. And I just, this church has been such an answer to, to my prayers. So many of my prayers, because last year I felt so lonely and by myself and I felt like I had no friends I had no community I was looking at social media all the time and I saw all of these Christians who had this like great community and like this big group of friends and going out and doing all these amazing things together and like praying together and worshiping together and I remember so many times where I just sat down and I was like god why don't I have that I I need community I want community why can't I have that like lord please give that to me and I would definitely say that that has been fulfilled. And then in April, very beginning of April, I we had a worship night with my college group on April 2nd, which was Good Friday, actually. And I decided to be baptized again. And I felt like because of all this stuff that has happened in the last year of my life and in the last few months since December, I want to get baptized again. And so I did on Good Friday and I think that's such a beautiful thing that I got to experience on on Good Friday which is the which is like we get to worship and celebrate what Jesus did for us and I got to be baptized and show everybody how free I am in Jesus after we just worshiped and had communion together and did all of that and I can't tell you how much I just I felt so en enveloped in love and support and like these people who who knew about my story were sitting here celebrating and cheering me on and actually i will show you guys the video i have the video of my baptism so that will play now <laughs> okay <laughs> morgan i know that we also we chatted about your story and your life um but i want you to make a procl proclamation of your faith publicly to everyone here tonight so can you just Share, like, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? No, no turning back? No. <laughs> All right, every high, every low, right? Okay. All right, well, then it is my honor. You can put your hand on your nose. It is my honor to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> my baptism was such a beautiful thing. I'm so so grateful for that experience and when I tell you that I have never felt more free in my life than I do have in the last um now eight months I I seriously mean it they're just 
And I will tell you, it was freezing the night of my baptism. I was shivering and I was so cold, but I got out and all these people like hugged me and just enveloped me with so much love. And I, I genuinely felt Jesus in that night. I felt his presence with me. And also I got a hoodie that was merch for my church and merch for my church. And it was really, really warm. So that was, that was such a good feeling after my baptism. So that happened and I was on such a high. And in the video, that was Elise who baptized me. Thank you, Elise. And you know, when she said like every high, every low, um, you know, I didn't realize that the low <laughs> would start 16 days after my baptism. That's when the low started again because I experienced a breakup and I will say it, you know, that was my first for real serious breakup that I've ever been through. And whew, that, that, that'll get you. And that'll remind you um, of like, oh yeah, I said that I was going to be with Jesus every high and every low. So I'm not, I'm not leaving now. And so since April 18th, there's been a lot a lot of emotions and anxiety and so much stuff going on. But from May until now, I have been growing and I'm changing and I'm still free. As of a couple of days ago, actually, on my tracker, I reached my eight month marker of being free and I haven't watched pornography since December and I am still free and I'm not alone and I've got this amazing community around me, both um, at school and at home, which is amazing because there's so much that's about to happen. I'm about to go back to school in a week for the first time in over a year to be back on campus and with my friends. And that's going to be so amazing. But I'm also anxious because there's there's life changes happening with my family. And so I'm anxious. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Uh, I just had my 20th birthday, so I'm 20 now, and just, it's a completely new and fresh start in my life. And so, all this to say, um, Jesus has saved my life, and I, I just, I just know from my personal experience of where I was to where I am now, literally just a year. If if God can change my life in this way, he can change anybody's life. He can change your life. Um, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know God, um, ask me questions. If you have any questions about what I've said or what I was feeling or anything, or if you are struggling with the same thing, please do not hesitate to send me a message. Talk to me about it because I, I know what you're going through. And it is such an awful place to be in to feel like you can't tell anybody. And it is such an awful place to feel like you can't get out of this and that you're just completely trapped and there's no way that you can get out and you're alone. And all of those are lies and schemes of the devil to get you to stay trapped. None of those are true. And if you wanna know what's true, go and read the Bible <laughs> or, or talk to me and I will help remind you of the truth. And the truth is that you are a son or a daughter of the king of all kings, the king of the universe, the, the, the God who literally created you, who created the entire world and everything in it, loves you and sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die a horrible, brutal death on a cross with a crown of thorns on his head, beaten and flogged. And he did it for you. He did it for me, he did it for you, he did it for your friend, your mom, your dad, everyone. And he did it to save you from your sin and to show you that you are forgiven. And nothing that you do or have done will ever change that. We are all sinners. Nobody's perfect. Absolutely no one. And if I have ever come off to anybody as somebody who is holier than thou and, and better than anybody, then I just want to 
formally apologize right here and right now because I'm not and I have been through some stuff and it is all a part of my testimony now which is so exciting because I get to share that with people and I just I seriously I just pray and I hope that God will just use this to touch somebody and if that somebody is you reach out to somebody because talking about it is seriously such the biggest weight off your shoulders and it will help to talk to somebody but God is so good all of the time <laughs> and I'm living proof of that and if you ever want to know why I believe in Jesus this is exactly why because nothing that I did by myself got me out of my addiction to pornography except when I gave it to God that is the moment that my entire life changed and the fact that it has stuck for so long is proof that Jesus changes lives and he can change yours too I don't know I feel like there's more that I could say but it's and it's really hard to end the video now but Jesus loves you so much. You're not alone in anything that you're struggling with. And you can get help and Jesus can change you. Seriously. So in a breakup, in any, of, in any sort of anything that you're going through, Jesus can bring joy that is so different from anything that the world has to offer. I swear to you that what the world has for you what the devil has for you that that may look good is only good temporarily but what jesus has for you is eternal and i know where i'm going when i die so i'm excited <laughs> and i love you guys so yeah anyway thank you for watching <laughs>